Once they're done watching this, they'll have a, a much greater sense of this is what this means. This is what I'm looking for. Real estate agent man. Yes, welcome to the Real Estate Agent Man podcast, and here we go. So truth about building codes. Let me kind of set that up for you a little sure. bit. Sure. I've had quite a few customers from uh, states that actually require the seller to bring their home up to code in order to sell it. Okay. Uh, I think my first experience with this years ago was somebody, I think in New Jersey, who was looking at homes in South Venice, which pretty much all have septic tanks. Okay. And uh, he was insistent that there, if there was a problem with the septic tank, that the seller would have to replace that tank in order to sell it. Prior to, okay. Yeah, prior to selling it. And, and that's just not the truth. And we got a little flying thing around here somewhere. Hopefully it, <laughs> it won't make this unnecessarily exciting. Um, and, and so, you know, there's, there's that aspect of it. And then, you know, just the idea that we have a lot of older houses in this area. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when, when is it that codes actually play a role in the inspection? That's a good question and, and really kind of a, <clears throat> a complicated question or can be complicated. So if, it, if we're talking about an older home that's been, you know, worked on or renovated recently, it kind of depends on the extent of renovations and how much energy had been put into obtaining, securing permits, and whether those permits were secured by the homeowner as, a, as someone working on their own property or by a contractor. Uh, so codes really come more into play when there is a substantial renovation interior or exterior in the house and they pull permits. Every bit of work that they do is supposed to be code compliant. Okay. With that said, as inspectors, uh, it's virtually impossible for us to stay up on the speed of codes changing in different counties. Sometimes they're based on townships. Uh, and then which codes, you know, occasionally codes get less strict or less stringent over time. Uh, one instance I can think of is uh, garage doors that entered uh, the inhabitant door into the garage from the from the garage in between the house needed to have a self-closing mechanism besides being a fire rated door. And that's something that was actually, um, you know, unbound, I guess, is the best way to say it by code that it no longer needs to be a, sp a spring loaded hinge and a self-closing door. It's OK for the door to close like any other door in the house. OK, so there are instances based on you know, what happened recently in the area and whether or not codes are getting stricter or less stringent. Uh, but in general, to answer your question, they become important or more prevalent once things are permitted. Um, if, if as an inspector and we enter the house and we're not sure what work has been done recently, um, it's hard for us to tell if it's supposed to be compliant with codes from 1975 when the house may have been built or if there was a renovation 15 years ago that would be difficult for us to know if it was done, you know, sometime in the 1990s, what right. codes were instituted at that point and what parts of the house are supposed to be compliant with that time frame versus when it was first constructed. So if you go into a house that was built in, say, 1974, okay, mm -hmm. and you can tell this is original. Right. Okay. The Brady's just moved out. <laughs> okay. Right. So there's nothing different. And, uh, and you're doing the inspection on that. And you get into the kitchen and you see that there's no GFCI outlets or things like that. Okay. How do you draft that on the report? That's a good question and, and a really a good instance. So in, in terms of safety, this is, you know, just maybe me personally or, or most inspectors, but uh, I recommend GFCIs are upgraded regardless of the time frame the house was built, when they're in bathrooms or in, in kitchens within three to six feet of water. So that's kind of a, uh, I don't want to call it a gray area, but that's an area where I feel strongly compelled to recommend that regardless of when the house was built, whether it was 1960, 1950. I think that's something that's important enough. And honestly, in the grand scheme of things is inexpensive relative to purchasing a house. You know, GFCIs are $30, $35 each. And if, if you have an electrician install them and you install it at the first circuit in that line, then you only need one to protect several outlets. So okay. Not to get too too deep in the weeds on that, but that's something where in the inspection report I would recommend they upgrade those for personal safety. Right. So recommendations are part of the inspection report. You're not just calling out 
the things that you see that are like, hey, that's not working right. Your AC isn't cooling the house below 80. Right. Okay. I mean, you definitely, you would want that in an inspection report if that was true. Correct. Uh, and, and those are the types of things that in our contracts, you know, there's a, an obligation on the seller's part to make repairs for whatever the negotiated dollar amount was on that. Uh, but, but updating things, your recommendations, that doesn't fall under a seller's responsibility, but you're putting that in there because, Correct. hey, this is kind of a big deal. This is bad. Right. Hey, this is something that I would recommend for whatever reason, safety or aesthetics or whatever the reason might be. Correct. And so that's, that's definitely one of the things that I wanted to come out of this conversation is to have a licensed Florida inspector and me be able to have this conversation because when people, you know, when they're hiring an inspector, they, they don't really know what their expectations should be. Right. And so once they're done watching this, they'll have a, a much greater sense of, you know, okay, this is when I get my report, this is what this means. This is what I'm looking for. Right. My inspector cares about me. So they're going to tell me things that I could or maybe should consider improving once I own the house. But it's not a requirement of the current owner. Correct. They lived in the house maybe for 50 years with it like that. And they're going to you ask them to fix this it, like I just lived in the house for 50 years like that. And you're There's, telling me it's been broken this whole time. You're telling right. me, yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry, don't buy it. That right there, if we just stop this podcast right now, right. would be an incredible benefit to the listener. You wanna own a place like the one you see? Maybe near the beach or a golf course green. You're searching on the web and housing magazines. It's time you call Steve Martin Homes to reach your dreams. We sell Sarasota. a sampling of beautiful homes that we've helped homeowners sell and buy across the greater Sarasota County area. Sellers enjoy our value added and customizable listing packages while our buyers just love getting their offers accepted. Everyone needs a realtor they can trust. So what are you waiting for? 941-894-9800 stevemartinhomes.com 